Hi. Oscillators play a huge role in plugins from Melda Production, both as parameter modulators and sound generators. Because the oscillators have so many features, I'm going to split this tutorial into two parts. In this part, you'll learn shape making capabilities that you'll use for modulation. And in the second one, we'll discuss wave sculpting that you can employ in M Power Synth or M Oscillator. Of course, both of them are interrelated and yet, as you'll see, some suit for a certain type of job better than others. All oscillators, no matter where you find them, share the same look. In the middle, you'll see a graphical presentation of a waveform an oscillator currently generates. The horizontal axis represents time and the vertical one an amplitude. Note that the amplitude is bipolar. To select a different waveform, right-click on the panel and in a pop-up window, choose a waveform you like. Some of them, saw, triangle, sine and square, look familiar. However, there are plenty of exotic shapes too. Two words about the noise and mess waves. They aren't true noise-like signals, as you might expect, because they aren't of a random nature. Despite these waves are inharmonic, they are repeatable. Keep that in mind when you work with them. The randomize is one more option for generating a new shape. Handy if you want to try something different to what you had in mind. Sometimes during shape making, you find that your new shape is of a small or too high amplitude. That can cause a defect modulation. To avoid that, keep the normalize option ticked. In this case, the new shape, no matter how weird it is, will always cover an entire amplitude range. The main shape controller allows a morphing between shapes we just saw in the pop-up window. Now, we're getting into more interesting and powerful features. If after trying all these shapes you've seen so far, you couldn't find the one you want, why not create it yourself? For that, set the custom shape controller 100% and then click on the edit button on the right. Welcome to the custom shape editor. Here you create a custom shape by adding points and adjusting curvature of segments between them. It's a very powerful tool. For all details, please refer to the shape editor tutorial. The new shape gets reflected at the main panel straight away. So, you can immediately hear the result of your actions. When done, click on OK. You can mix an original and custom shapes by adjusting the custom shape parameter. The built-in step sequencer is another powerful tool to create an original modulation signal shape. This method will suit more for those occasions when you want every step to be in sync with your host program. To open it, click on the edit button on the right side of the step sequencer controller. The panel on the right shows a sequence you are making. The horizontal axis represents a number of steps and the vertical one is the amplitude. Black rectangles with white shapes are a collection of brushes that we'll use to paint the sequence. So, how does it work? Let's say we want to have a one bar sequence with one eighth note steps. Then we set the number of steps equal to eight. For emulating a classic step sequencer, select the very top rectangle. Now, click on the first step to put the rectangle shape there. Then, next step and so on. As you can see, it's pretty simple. If in the middle of making you decide that you want steps to be 1 16th resolution, simply select one of those shapes and keep on designing. To get one quarter step, put two 1 8 steps in a row at the same level. Two more things to know. 
you can quantize levels value by this parameter. Quite frequently, we want to work with predefined levels and that's where the quantization is handy. The second thing is that the modulation signal can vary from a negative to a positive value, plus or minus 100% or being a positive only, 0 to plus 100%. The button switching between these modes is here. The difference between them isn't so important for the rectangle shape signal. However, it will become so when you start using other shapes. For extra ideas, randomize the sequence by clicking on random values or random shapes buttons. When finished with editing, click on OK. Again, you can combine an original and step sequencer shapes by setting the step sequencer controller. Sometimes a waveform smoothing is necessary, perhaps to avoid clicking or simply to make a transition from one point to another softer. This is where we need the smoothness parameter. Applying it results in straightened curves in a waveform. If that doesn't suffice, click on the advanced button and you get even more options for a shape making. Let's start from the top. The custom sample panel is where you can load a sample whose entire waveform will be used as a one period wave. Don't confuse it with a sampler though, you can't play it back. The sample will be stored as part of the preset only if the depth parameter is higher than zero. Another thing to know is that this parameter overwrites the custom shape and step sequencer controllers. The shape panel holds four controllers for a further shape transformation. I won't go through each of them as the visual feedback makes using them very easy. Please keep in mind that changing these parameters takes lots of CPU resources, so try not to automate them. The harmonics panel allows adding multiple versions of the shape. In case of a sine wave, you can tell that you add harmonics. However, for more complex waveforms, you add the same waveform whose period is multiplied by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Let me demonstrate that on a saw wave example. Here is a saw wave. Now, see what's happening if I add the third harmonic. As you can see, the shape consists of three periods of a saw wave biased by the first original one. If I set the first harmonic to zero, I'll get the three periods of saw wave with the same amplitude. Sliders on the right set a phase of each harmonic. The transformations panel holds two powerful tools for even more crazy shape manipulation, shape and amplitude. You've already seen it when we're discussing the custom shape panel. The workflow is the same but the outcome is totally different. The shape panel transforms, well, shape. Here are some basic rules to get you started. The vertical axis represents the time axis of an initial shape, a sine wave in my example. The horizontal axis corresponds to the time of the new shape we are creating. An ascending line in the middle tends to keep a polarity of the original. If I make it descending, the polarity will get inverted. The horizontal line simply turns the original into the direct current DC. I know it's a bit complicated, but look how simple it is in practice. If I add a point here and move it to the very top, I'll shrink the shape. As you can see, the original shape has moved to the beginning and the rest is just DC. What will happen if I move the very right point to the bottom? I'll add an inverted original shape, taking all the space between the shrunken part and the end. 
if I change the curvatures, my new shapes will respond to it correspondingly. As you can see, it's not hard at all if you know the basics. The amplitude panel presents input versus output amplitude plot. Here, the slope of the ascending line sets a shape's amplitude. As with the shape panel, a descending line inverts the polarity and the horizontal one turns any shape into a straight line. The whole idea, of course, is to break the line by points and to create a shape you need by modifying the straight line. The custom shape, step sequencer and advanced settings window settings can be saved as presets and the presets are interchangeable between all oscillators and all plugins. Very convenient if you ask me. That covers all shape making tools an oscillator offers. In the second part, I'll introduce you to tone sculpting. Bye for now.